Well, hey, Church of Hope, I am so honored to introduce you to our partner, Pastor Jeff at Hillview Heights Church in Kentucky, and our very own Kevin Shealy here in Ocala, Florida. So Pastor Jeff, Kevin, welcome. I'm glad that we get to have this conversation today. Yes, good to be with you. Absolutely. And you know, Church of Hope, in December, leading up to Christmas, we woke up to the devastating news of the tornadoes in Kentucky. And we knew that we needed to lean in. We wanted to be a part of a moment where families were waking up feeling hopeless. And this is what we, Church of Hope, what we're all about, why we exist, to literally partner with people to discover hope in Christ. So Kevin connected us with Pastor Jeff. Um, in fact, I learned that they went to youth group together back in the day. So this is a longtime friendship. We got connected. And as a part of our Jesus at the top offering, you Church of Hope actually immediately sent $10,000 to Hillview Heights to just immediately put resources on the ground with this team as they're partnering with people. So today we wanted to connect with Pastor Jeff and just see what's happening now and how we can continue to partner as the same team. So Pastor Jeff, like I would love to just hear what's the state of the community now and what's your biggest need in partnering with people to discover hope in Christ in Kentucky? Yeah, well, thank you so much, Emily, and Church of Hope, uh, Kevin, always good to catch up with you, and just grateful, grateful for how, uh, and just the church, you know, uh, we uh, just kind of goes across uh, outside the uh, state lines, and we're, I mean, we're, we're, we're the church together, and so just thankful for that, and thankful for um, just partnering with us. Um, I mean, our community, you know, December 11th, man, it, it rocked Bowling Green, Kentucky, I mean, who would have thought that we would have tornadoes in December? And uh, they were devastating. And they hit the ground in uh, different areas in our community um, and ripped through some, some neighborhoods, uh, uh, several neighborhoods that were totally devastated. Um, and, and since then, I mean, the community, we're still healing. Um, there's a lot of that still going on. They're still uh, starting, starting the rebuilding process, which is going to be super slow. And um, for just various reasons, uh, but uh, it, it was just so encouraging to you know, when I woke up Saturday morning, I was up half tonight on Friday night because of the storm itself, and I woke up to about fifty different text messages from people from all over saying, "Hey, are you okay?" And and our emails like from Kevin, "What can we do?" And so um, so just overwhelmed by the response and. You know, in the first week after when the tornado hit, the first week we had people I mean, from all over the world. I, I couldn't believe it. We were out one day working at one of the sites and doing cleanup and just getting to know people and finding out where they're from. And there's from, you know, it was from, from Texas to Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia, Indiana, and people who just said they kind of got up and just thought, I'm just going to drive the Bowling Green and just help where I can. And, and so it was overwhelming, the response of, of people to come and help. And it, it was incredible. Um, but, you know, after a week or so and, um, you know, the cleanup, the major cleanup has really been has been done uh, and has blown away about how quickly that happened. Uh, but, man, this community came together and people came together. The, the church came together and. Um, you know, in a matter of a week and a half or two weeks, a lot of those folks begin to leave, and and they needed to. They got they got to get back to their life and and, and where the Lord has them, um, and that's kind of where we are now. You know, it's been a little over eight weeks, which is hard to believe. That's when the tornado hit, yeah. and and now we're at a point where we are still assessing needs. Um, agencies like FEMA, they're just about finished with all of their work here. Um, and taking care of families the best they can financially. Uh, but when they pull out, uh, and when places like Red Cross, is, you know, when they pull out, there are still a lot of long-term needs to be met. So a lot of short-term needs were met quickly and just grateful for that. Uh, but there's a lot of long-term needs that's, uh, that's going to be, we'll be facing for the next several years. Wow. Hey, Jeff, first off, I've got to say, it's so good to hear a Kentucky accent. Uh, that, that does me well to hear that. I don't hear enough of it here in Florida. You take it out, man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> hey, so what, how did Church of Hope, uh, um, you know, a church in Ocala, Florida, a long way from Bowling Green, 
how did that make a difference in impacting you and the Hillview Heights team and, and the Bowling Green community? Yeah, Kevin, it, I was, again, overwhelmed when, one, you connected with me and said, what, what can we do? And we, we had a few other churches and, and folks outside of here ask the same thing. And, and when I told you, I said, one of the best ways right now, I mean, we, we don't need donations. And when we got to a point, we had to turn, turn donations away. Um, and we needed gift cards and we needed money. Mm-hmm. And when uh, I went to our, uh, one of our uh, financial assistants here and I went, I went to check and to see when you had uh, Emily talking to you, Mm-hmm. that hey that's been sent and I wanted to just follow up and see and I was first of all just just blown away at, of, of the amount that your church and your your church I mean Kevin I know you and we, it's been years yes but just to think oh my gosh you guys the, the blessing of I mean, that that's a large gift and and it was overwhelming and to share that even with some other staffers uh, so one, I tell you what it did for me. I mean, personally, it just reinforced them in the body of Christ. You know, there are no borders to that, you know, and, and, and it also reinforced the fact of just these, these connections we have with one another, you know, and Kevin, the one we have, you know, we, this may have never happened unless, you know, we had that growing up and, and what was instilled within us about reaching out and being the church. And so, um, so that, that's made a tremendous impact. And it, plus it gives us, we're in a position now as we are assessing what these long-term needs are. Uh, and we, because of y'all's gift, we, we can do so much more and, 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 and not just to do things to meet those physical needs for the physical need's sake. I mean, we know, man, Jesus taught that well, you know, um, yeah. you, you helped me when I was naked. You helped me when I was, you know, when did we see you? Well the least of these, but what it does is, and you know, you guys know this, you know, when we meet physical needs, man, we get an opportunity yeah. to come back and to be able to share the greatest need. And that is, man, do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with him? And, and a lot of people ask, why are you doing this? Why would a church in, in Florida, you know, send $10,000 to Hillview Heights Church to help um, Jesus change our lives? And he tells us to go and to serve and to, to be the hands and feet. And so um, that's, that's how it's impacted me. And it's impacted a lot of folks um, in our church and our community. I love how you shared that. And it's so DNA to who Church of Hope is. Like we really believe that we are, we like to say we're hashtag same team because we are, it's all yes. about Jesus. It's not about where you sit on a Sunday. Um, you know, you shared people have come, people have gone home. Um, much of the world is getting back into their routine. And so it can be easy to just forget. And we don't want to forget because this is still very much in the forefront of your mind um, in your community. So how can we as Church of Hope continue to pray with and for you, partnering with you throughout the next several weeks and months as you're assessing all of the needs? Yes. Um, well, first and foremost, um, and just pray. Pray and, and specifically pray for just discernment hmm. um, as we are stepping into these families' lives um, and, and, and what we're doing is, by the way, so we've got four or five churches in our community where we have basically kind of took our community and we got a grid and we we're each taking a section and, and, and we're going door to door, just asking what our needs, instead of saying, y'all come to us. And we had a system like that for a yeah. while when some short term needs were needed and people would come yeah. and, and sad to say, some people took advantage of that, um, yeah. you know, who weren't affected by the tornado. Uh, and yet we helped them because that's what we do, but we want to be good stewards. And so we're going door to door and asking people just in our, in our section and our grid and asking what are, what are, what are those needs? And so just pray, prayers for discernment, um, prayers for, we have a lot of folks who are, you know, the, the, the tornado effect who are uh, from just different um, parts of the world. We have a, we have a, we, we are a refugee city. So we have a lot of refugees here who, when they lost their home and they didn't have insurance, they lost it all. And so uh, pray, pray for some of those, those barriers, those language barriers. I, I tell you a, a, a cool story. The Lord brought a, a young man who's a college student who speaks uh, like eight different languages. And, and he is from the Middle East. 
and he is a believer in Jesus, and he is becoming just a voice, a great interpreter for us, and talking to some of these families. And so, I mean, he and he just came here in, in October. And so talk about like, all right, God, your timing's the best. But so just prayers and, and how we interact with these families and how do we, how do we, yes, meet the physical need, but also meeting those spiritual needs. And so prayer um, is, is that's, that's a huge need. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for that. That is, um, I got a little goosebumps with uh, talking about the student and, and how God provides yeah. at the right yeah. time. Um, what yeah. we need. Um, but you know, it's, we've been out of Kentucky a little while, but it's February. And so I know it's still cold in Kentucky. You've got people who are, who are dealing with transition, who are not in their home. They've lost mm -hmm. so many things. Um, there's still financial need as you all work through your, your quadrants. Uh, if we have partners who are listening today and who want to, to be able to give financially to continue to help Hillview reach that community, how can they best do that? What's the best opportunity for them? The best way as far as giving is the same way as what you guys did before. We have on our website set up where you can make a donation to, to our disaster relief. Um, and 100% of that goes towards disaster relief. And so we have some good accountability in that. Um, and so that, that's really the best way is, is, is just to do that through uh, online. Um, and I think continuing to you know, uh, for you guys periodically, whenever y'all would like to, hey, give us an update now, you know, uh, a few months from now and six months from now. I, I think it'd be kind of neat to do this again, yeah. if y'all would like to. Yes, uh, we would love that. But to hear more, because I really believe in the long term, we're going to, there's going to be some other needs that, that come about. Yeah. You know, right now, we really don't need lots of teams of people here yet, but I think there's going to be a moment in time where that is going to be needed. Um, but right now, uh, yeah, th those prayers. Um, listen, pray for, we, we've had, you know, we, there was 17 people, I believe, who, who, who died from this tornado. And the reality of this tornado hit me. We hosted a funeral for the Brown family here, and there were seven people in this family who died. And, and it just, the impact of that, I mean, it's just it, it, very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so pray for, pray for healing. And, and peace and comfort over those families who are looking for answers uh, and how, how the church, how we can go into those moments of their lives and their seasons and, and be able to bring hope and to speak of hope that's found in Jesus. And so those are other ways, but did I answer the question there though, Kevin? I think you said I, that. I, I think you did. I think you did. <laughs> no, you got a little bit more like... Kentucky in there too, which was awesome. Hey, I mean, thank you for just this update today for sharing the stories of how people are discovering hope in Jesus and how we can continue to partner with you. Um, definitely more updates to come. Like this has been such a privilege and an honor. Um, and, you know, I would love to ask Kevin if you wouldn't mind praying over Pastor Jeff and the team right now. Absolutely. Be my pleasure. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Uh, we thank you that, that we are one family. Uh, mm -hmm. that we are your sons and daughters. And so uh, when I pray for my brother, Jeff, I'm praying for my brother, Jeff, and for the believers there in Bowling Green at Hillview Heights, God, and how they are being uh, little Christ, truly Christians, mm -hmm. and ministering to that community and showing what it means to love others more than yourself. And, and for the hope that we have because of you and your son and the redemption. God, I just ask that you bless their efforts, continue uh, to give them safety um, and, um, and discernment and knowledge as they're seeking to make a difference. God, mm -hmm. thank you for um, all that we can do each day uh, to make the world aware that hope can only be found in one place, and that is in your son. God, we just thank you and we praise you. We ask all of these things in your name, in the name of your son, Jesus, in the name of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Jeff. Thank you, Kevin.